Bad Batch, Episode 5, Entombed. Is that what we watched, or was it uh, Indiana Jones, the animated series? <laughs> or was it Star Wars... Uh, Uncharted. Uncharted, yes, I couldn't even remember. <laughs> or or was it... Uh, or was it the Clone Wars Laura Croft? <laughs> it was one. It was one or the other. Who knows? I can't keep track of all this stuff. Oh boy. It was a uh, it was certainly an episode. That it was. <laughs> but it was kind of a it was kind of a filler episode. It definitely seemed like Pretty it. Pretty much. But I was thinking about it. You know, we get uh I don't know what uh, Wanda Sykes' character name is. I cannot remember. But it's almost like they used the last two episodes to build out Sid and Wanda Sykes' character a little more. Because, honestly, Mm -hmm. I mean, while it was a good episode, I mean, it it wasn't, like, terrible by any sense of the imagination, it really didn't push the story forward much with anything except for us getting to know Wanda Sykes' character and letting us know that even though it sounds like she's very George Santos. And uh, her name is Fee, by the way. Fee? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, she actually has some skills. You know, she you know, talks about it. I like, you know, when they call her a pirate. You know, <laughs> she's kind of like, eh, it's not really. I love her response to that. <laughs> I'm a treasure hunter. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was very nice to see her actually, you know, back some of those things up. But I think this is only going to be used as a little character development for those two to build out the rest mm-hmm. of the season because so the ads popped up I don't know what was mm-hmm. happening for three minutes <laughs> sorry Sierra <clears throat> that's how we pay our bills with the ads but uh <laughs> we're, we're talking about the latest episode of the Bad Batch and uh how it was uh primarily kind of a filler episode you know what it reminded me of this week Keith what did it remind you of sir it sort of reminded me of the uh, the Martez sisters episodes of Clone Wars, and also of the Bad Batch, since they decided to bring them back. <laughs> Which, why? <laughs> Are they like someone's favorite? Is that like you know like how Dave Filoni is always talking about like how much he loves Ahsoka? Like, is somebody who works on this series like friggin' Martez sisters? I love them. They need their own series. They need to be in live action. The sooner, the better. But yeah, seriously, it felt sort of like that, where we've got these annoying side characters that are l- pretty much there to help add a little bit more character growth and um, just kind of add a bit of filler into an overall thing. Like, I guess I guess this is to be expected. Not all of the episodes are going to be bangers, you know? They're not all going to be amazing and deep like um, uh, the the Solitary Clone. That was, so far, out of the episodes that we've seen so far... I think that was the best one out of the bunch so far. No, it, it, it 100% was. I mean, that by far was the best Bad Batch episode from any season. I mean, yeah. I absolutely loved that episode. I watched Did it you, again the other you night. You what loved it? Absolutely loved it, yes. But I know at some point, I don't remember which time, we were talking a little bit about what's next for the Bad Batch and I'm starting to think it isn't going to be Sid. That was smooth. I'm sorry. I just, I gotta, sorry, Tundra Walker. I have to applaud him real quick. That was pretty, that was really smooth. Thank you. Thank you. Good for you. Anyway. Getting getting better at this whole OBS thing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. Sierra's even getting close to spinning. You too, Sierra. (laughs) But I no longer think Sid is going to be the one that turns him in. Even though, you know, Wanda Sykes' character is close with Omega, too, I think she's going to be the one that eventually it's going to be too good of a payday oh, for her not to turn it I can see that. And I, think I it's could good. easily see that. And I think that's why they're kind of making a... <laughs> Who knew Dave was the linchpin of the show? Everybody, I thought. Oh, he, Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave will be here soon, though. He had some things to do. He's going to be running a little late, but he will catch up to us in a in a little bit, I suppose. But it's going to be too too much. Because I think Sid has a sort of moral code. Like, she's not going to turn him in because she's worked with them. They've made him money. 
where especially after that uh, that previous episode with with the race you you definitely could see something a little bit of growth and change in her even where like even though she has obviously changed from apparently who she used to be um you know who this uh this one has in his basement god <laughs> shut up dave anyway um <laughs> So did yeah, you not put the, pancakes guy, under the did you not put pancakes under the door for Dave again? Oh, was I supposed to? He's supposed to eat once a week. Oh, I thought you said once a month. Ooh, <laughs> okay. And yes, he is creating a, a scroll army. He's trying to take over this planet. Some might call it a secret invasion. Well, it's not a secret now, Keith. <sighs> blab it to everybody. Well, like five people know now. I don't know. I still think it's getting a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's why I'm so scared to hear. I know he's going to he's gonna be like, hey, is it okay if you swing by my house? I got a bag of money to give you. And I'll come in. I'll be chloroformed, <laughs> dragged out of his basement, and scroll Keith will be at my, <laughs> hanging out with my family soon. Wow. Keith has been, like, so much greater lately. <laughs> <laughs> did, did we just completely go into tangent time we did we did oh lord okay let's let's swing it back to the bad batch real quick you know so we're the, talking about Sid right we're talking about how um, there's a potential that she's not going to turn them in because she's probably grown as a character she's got a little bit more of a moral compass where C doesn't mm -hmm. I think she is more like Hondo, where she is going to do what is ever best for her. And I think we're going to get to a point at some point when the reward for turning him in from the Empire is going to be too big for her to pass up. And, yeah, I can you know, see that. I think that's when this... Because, uh, honestly, the best part about the Bad Batch is seeing the Empire in its early stages and them, you know, getting chain codes assigned to, you know, citizens on planets... You know, mm -hmm. all the things that we see the Empire doing to make everyone's lives miserable, which, you know, was displayed so well during Andor. And them, you know, having an episode where they're doing pod racing and then followed by one where, you know, they're treasure hunting seems a bit out of place. But It, it really does. And I don't, I don't know if, like, maybe they ran some of these episodes by a test audience and they're like, yeah, everybody loves the, the goofy one-offs. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to just make a bunch of those. And then they realized, oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, we got these numbers wrong. Everybody liked the uh, the deep episodes from the Clone Wars, not the droid episodes. Whoops. <laughs> See, and I'm hoping that's not, you know, because the next couple episodes, next week is called Tribe. So it sounds like maybe they'll be meeting up with some clones that are living together as a group, maybe. But then we get two episodes on February 8th, The Clone Conspiracy and Truth and Consequences. Oh, now that sounds like it might be good. We do, It does sound like we're going to get some, you know, better, d darker, you know, better, more bad batchy episodes mm -hmm. coming up. Because then we got The Crossing, Retrieval, Metamorphosis. Not sure who that's talking about. Maybe it's the giant robot from that planet in this week's episode. It's going to turn into well, like a car. They better do something with that because you cannot introduce a giant Megazord shooting lasers out of its mouth and then be like, and that's the only time it'll appear. <laughs> you know, then we have the Outpost, Pabu, Tipping Point, the Summit, which we do think could be housing all of the uh, storage from all, you know, everything the Emperor has possibly stolen, where they're doing, where they moved all their clone facilities off of Kamino. Mm -hmm. And then follow, follow, ending last you know, episode 16, Plan 99. So it does sound like hopefully we're these one-offs sort of building up some secondary side characters a bit, maybe at its end, which, you know, if it pays off in the end and what we learned about Sid and Fee in these two episodes pays off somewhere down the line, okay. But, you know, when I'm watching it, when I was watching The Solitary Clone, I was like, oh my God, yes, this is fantastic. And then when I was watching these episodes, you know, I was like, oh boy, pod racing. I'm so glad they brought that back. <laughs> you, you know, I, not to toot my own horn, but I will say, 
although that episode wasn't exactly the greatest, I did make a pretty cool uh, uh, YouTube thumbnail for it. Yes. Yes, you did. That's, that's probably one of my favorites that I've, that I've made so far. And it looks like Real Bad Brad is here. Welcome, Real Bad Brad. Hey, Welcome. what's going on, buddy? Appreciate it. Welcome. We're talking to Bad Batch a little bit. You know, and sorry, uh, Tundra Walker's all over me because I didn't put up the tangent time graphic. I didn't have it set up in this scene in OBS with only two of us. You know, Dave being late was kind of a last minute, so I didn't have as much mm -hmm. time to prepare. But it's only because I didn't have the Bad Batch What's Next uh, in this in the tangent time for two. So here, let me get that taken care of for you. <laughs> You're really giving into them. You know, I know. you give a dog a, a, or you give a mouse a cookie, or however the rest of that goes. I think it's if you give a mouse a cookie, uh, he's going to do something bad, or he's going to attack you, or yeah. you're going to want milk. I've read that book so many times. Yeah, I've tried so, to block it out. In, in, this, in this case, Tundra Walker is a mouse. You're not, giving him his cookie. That's right. You know, I, I never learn. I make the same mistakes over and over again. So, you know, that's on me. Real bad, right? He's going to ask for a glass of milk. And then if you give him his glass of milk... Then he's going to want a straw. And then if you give him a straw, he's going to drop it in the ocean and then a dolphin will die. Before I respond to that, <laughs> I just, I want to get a, hold on. What's the... You're not going to bait me into a premature bane. Ew. <laughs> that just, that sounds dirty. You know, all I, I'm almost ready for a tangent time out of, with just two of us, Tundra Walker. <laughs> okay, there you go, finally. But, you know, Doug talking about it going into the ocean and killing a dolphin. Whoever was the marketing people that made convinced everybody that if you didn't cut up those little tops that the, the fish soda and, rings yeah the soda yeah. rings animals are going to die my entire family still does it i'm like they don't my entire family doesn't agree on anything but it's like we better cut these up we don't want any dead dolphins anywhere <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even know they still made those plastic rings yeah yeah if you get like a six pack of cans it's on there still okay no kidding Tundra Walker. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or some bottles. You're right. If you get a like a uh, six pack of Werner twenty ounces, they're on there. Uh, I haven't. I have not bought bought multiples of soda in a while, um, in, unless it's been like um, one of the cardboard boxes of cans. And I do that like whenever we've got a party going on. But yeah, I. Uh, I haven't bought anything that had, like, plastic holding them in a long time. Used to, years ago. It's probably a good thing. I probably drink too much soda, but that's all right. I had to get Holly some ginger hey, ale because of her you, stomach. You know what? Oil. You drink soda, I consume way too much coffee. I used to uh, also. My, my doctor has told me, he asked me once, like, uh, you know, how much I, I drink, and I said, well, you know, about three, four a day, and he goes, I'm, how much? And I said, about three, four a day. This is like little cups and well my mug's about like this big that he, and he goes that is far too much he is that what two pots i'm like yeah <laughs> around there <laughs> probably about <laughs> but uh tundra walker said he gets his wife ginger ale because of her stomach bug and hey you know what to each their own she likes ginger ale holly is a wonderful person so i will not uh cap on her for not enjoying Verner's. Everyone should enjoy Verner's. We had... Well, really, you should only be enjoying Verner's if you're not feeling well. No, no, I feel fine. It is Michigan's Verner's. medicine. We had a... Uh, at my 9 to 5 job, we had a visitor in from the UK and, a, and a, someone in from Philly from one of our uh, partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, I turned them on to Verner's. Oh, really? We had, you know, we had it at work, and I, I said, here you go, try one of these. And they're like, what is it? I'm like, it's ginger ale only better. And he, they both were like, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> no. <laughs> ginger ale, but better. I like that. But let's get back to the Bad Batch. I don't really oh, know yeah, if there's yeah. much more to talk about about this episode. Well, we can mention that, again, they, uh, they went through a whole bunch of series of puzzles and traps. Like I said, it was very Indiana Jones-esque. Um... Uh, they, uh, 
they found some sort of... Uh, so they were looking for... The treasure they are looking for was supposed to be the heart of the mountain. And they found it, and it turned out it was really more of like a key in a way. It was this like giant crystal. And too bad it wasn't skull-shaped. Yes! <laughs> but they probably they had that at first. Thing. It was like, a, and they're like, come on, you guys can't do that. Shia LaBeouf now, can't come and be in this episode, so you can't do it. He could have been. They should have. <laughs> but were you getting any, uh, were you kind of like feeling, oh, this, this seems really familiar when they pulled that crystal out? Yes. I did too. And so do you want to know what I did immediately after watching that? You watched Indiana Jones. No. Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, I turned on that episode of um, Rebels. Where they, uh, where Ahsoka fights Vader, oh. where uh, Maul was uh, leading um, Ezra, and they were pulling the Sith holocron out. I went back and I watched that episode because it reminded me. Some I'm like, I swear to God, I've seen a scene like this before where they pulled something out of a thing and it activated like a battle station. And I kid you not, it was like almost the same thing, save for it didn't turn into a dinosaur shooting laser beams out of its mouth. But it did shoot a sky beam in, you know, well, into the sky. <laughs> Everything has to shoot a sky beam into the sky. Yeah. I just but, want to know if we'll get any backstory on who built that monstrosity, I mean, why they, they were destroying to. planets. They kept implying that it was, uh, you know, older than the Jedi. Someone just bought us three coffees. Thank you, whoever did that. That was appreciated. No kidding. Yeah, wow. I used uh, used our uh, stream deck to put that out there. It was it was real bad, Brad. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's awesome. But you know, hopefully, I kept thinking the whole time they were like, "This is uncharted. This is this." I thought we were going to get some sort of flashback to the High Republic, and this would be something to maybe build out. You know, for the acolyte coming. Oh, we would get year. a flashback. Not a Come flashback, on. but some some history, some lore. That may be used when they start, you know, bringing up uh, High Republic stuff. But really, they just wanted to have a giant robot monster destroying a planet, I think. That, yeah. yes. I'm pretty sure that's all they wanted. Do you mind if I take this moment to kind of call out some of the other channels who sort of kind of do what we do, but, you know, worse? Do it, sir. We're in tangent time. Great. Okay. So... A lot of these other channels out there, I'm not going to name, like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm calling, not calling that one specifically, but, you know, you've got your screen crushes and your um, heavy spoilers and all of these other types of channels. And I've noticed that whenever they hear somebody in one of these shows, whether it's, um, you know, a, a movie or a show, and somebody will say sort of, uh, yes, you know, back in the old Republic... I think their instant thought, they always want to go to, oh, they must mean the Republic before um, the Republic that fell to the Empire. And generally, I don't think that's what most of these characters are talking about. Usually when they're talking about the Old Republic, they're talking about the one that recently fell to the Empire, and they're talking about it as in, it was the Republic, it's old, now the Empire's in place. And I say that because... Somebody had recently used a clip for, of Obi-Wan saying, uh, um, yes, back in the days of the old Republic, uh, you know, from uh, A New Hope, when he's talking to Luke. And I'm pretty sure he's literally just talking about the Republic. I don't think he was talking about a time prior to him existing. No, you're probably right. And they, they did that again in this episode. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they had mentioned, uh, oh yeah, this... This tomb is older than uh, than than the Jedi, and you know it's uh, older than the uh, the old Republic or whatever and stuff like that. And they're they're you know I I think some some of these channels they look a little bit too deep into it. And come on, come on. You, no, you're right. Use your heads. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we got? Uh, what we got going on here in the in the chat? Sierra saying, hey, girl, hey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I gave her a hey back because I wasn't sure what exactly to do. Because mm. I was trying to. I noticed our scene for trailer reaction is for three people. So I have Whoopsie. got to make a copy of this bad boy. Hmm. 
Now, the other thing that I will mention about, uh, let's see, I need 406 more stones until I can create Mass Havoc for the three of you. Okay. <laughs> but, um, the other thing that, uh, again, going back to, you know, we were talking about this giant mech dinosaur thing. Um, the one thing that I will say about it, it being there to begin with, um, a lot of uh, speculation that I've been reading online is going around to the fact that people think it's got to be either a uh, you know a Sith weapon or perhaps a um, a Jedi weapon of some sort. Like they're all trying to describe what they think it is. The fact that it's powered by a crystal that may be a Kyber crystal or a precursor to it, because that seems to be the thing that powers most of the laser weaponry in the Star Wars universe, right? So we we know that the Death Star used Kyber in order to power its lasers. Same with um. Uh, you know, a lot of the other weapons that they use, like the, uh, uh, oh my god, what is it called? The the Final Order ships. Oh yeah, oh my god, what was that? With their, with their planet destroying, like, each one of them has the power of a Death Star laser. It's like, fucking JJ. <laughs> Come on, man. But yeah, I, I think it was probably something like that. Um, but I did read, and I think this might be my favorite theory so far. That I heard about this la about this uh, this laser and the or the machine in general, somebody said, "Well, what if it isn't the Sith or the Jedi? What if it was designed by the precursor to both of them? What if it was the Bendu? Oh, I and like what if that. It was, what if it was a weapon that they had designed in order to again create order? Because at that time, if this is as old as they're implying, what if the uh, you know the Sith and the Jedi were just starting to?" Uh, come about, and the Bendu saw them as, oh, hey, whoa, 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 you know, you're you're creating splits, you're creating a divide, there's supposed to be order, there's not supposed to be one too far on uh, the uh, the light and not too far on the dark. <laughs> the chat is teaming up against us again. <laughs> oh, jeez. Order 66, Sierra, that should be our code, Order 66, then we unleash 15 straight minutes <laughs> of voices. <laughs> what? <laughs> What what do you what do you guys gain from this? What do you get out of it? Is is Tundra, this is this your entertainment? Tundra Walker, what did we do to you? Who hurt right. you? <laughs> Who hurt you? <laughs> My God. Uh, that new episode of uh, Harlequin can come soon enough because, like I said, I am running out of shit to say as Bane. <laughs> entertainment value. Nailed it. Yes. Thank you. It is entertaining. That's true. Uh, <laughs> did, you, uh, did you figure it out? Uh, I believe so, but of course I can't update the... <clears throat> so I'm gonna do... A kid at heart. Thank you.